I think the Escazú Agreement is a real symbol of hope um, for the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. It's the first environmental rights treaty that tries to ensure that people's role in decision making on the environment is clear for governments. What rights do people have to information, participation, and be able to go to court to access justice? I think it's a really exciting time because 16 countries in the region have signed agreement. Um, Guyana has ratified and Bolivia has begun the process of ratification. It shows that there is at least a recognition of the importance of the agreement and the potential for it to change the way in which people feel they have a role to play in decision about various things from energy to forest, land use, um, air quality. Uh, it allows people to, their rights to be um, consulted in an effective and timely way um, to be changed at the national level. So right now, I think we're on the cusp of trying to get 11 countries to ratify. Um, and it really behooves um, you know, members of the public to, to get involved, to understand what this agreement is about, if they care about climate change, about forests, about beaches, about oceans. Um, this convention is about your rights to participate in decision-making uh, at the national or local level. Uh, the World Resources Institute, um, as an institute, has been privileged uh, to serve as Secretariat for the Access Initiative. It's a network that works on the promotion of environmental rights around the world. And the members that we have in countries all around Latin America and the Caribbean had a pivotal role in the negotiation process, in defining the terms of the agreement and the su potential success of the agreement. And that role, I think, becomes even stronger now that we're at the stage of trying to get ratifications um, of the agreement. Um, it's only likely that governments will continue to have the political will to act if they hear from people that this agreement matters, that it matters in you know everyday decision making, that people want to have a role, they want to understand the information that government has before it makes decisions. They want to understand how they can participate. Uh, so it becomes crucial that civil society continues to play a very active role in defining how the public can participate in the agreement, uh, in, in focusing on what implementation should look like, in, in calling for, for ratification, signature and implementation of this agreement, you know, bringing to light some of the key issues in, in which civil society have been excluded and the results of that exclusion, which we know already are things like conflict over decision making on land, um, you know, unfortunate incidents that result in environmental land defenders being killed across the region. Um, all of that can happen if we continue to have very conflictual decisions about development and mega infrastructure in the region. So the role of civil society, I think, is to continue to advocate very strongly for the importance of this agreement to, to really ensure that people have a say uh, in how their nat the national development of their country. Uh, we need to have, continue to have a powerful civil society that has a voice uh, in the convention space. The Escazú Agreement is one of two agreements um, across the, the regions of the, the world that deals with the important rights of people to participate in environmental decision. The other is called the Aarhus Convention. Um, and I think what, um, because Escazú is a, a, a convention that's in developing countries, it will be different from other conventions, and it has been different from the Aarhus Convention. Um, the fact that Escazú focuses on vulnerable groups um, and how they can participate in decision, whether they have access to information, and how they get access to justice is what makes it really innovative. Um, and I think that if we get the implementation of Escazú right, it will support capacity building across the region for governments that have been working on how to ensure that we continue, we don't continue continue to leave behind very vulnerable populations, those in poverty, um, indigenous groups, from the decision-making process about what happens on the land and forests around them. Um, or even in the city about decisions about energy use uh, or, or about water. All of those are decisions where people have a role to play um, in, in advising about their needs and how government should make decisions that help them. What really is important about Escazú is the, the provisions on vulnerable groups. Um, and I think it becomes a framework for implementation 
uh, of the Sustainable Development Goals, which talk to how do we improve and continue to do sustainable development in a way that does not damage the environment and leaves no one behind. So for me, Esco Zoo is a symbol that can be very influential for other regions of the world, whether it's Africa or Asia. Um, we've already heard that uh, advocates from those regions are inspired by the Escazú agreement and so it becomes even more important that we try and get uh, the convention ratified by 11 countries as soon as possible uh, to start the implementation process.